is going on guys welcome back to another episode of the campaign grind i am pedro diaz i am your host and this is the campaign grind we are here once again with our co-host mr ray valdez what's going on brother you, sir. good to see you good man good to see you too you don't have a jacket yeah. today no i left it over there on oh, my okay. couch you uh, wanted to be a little, a little happy. no but, you know i i put a jacket on if you put a jacket on it's all good trying to match but we kind of got the same color that's shirt. why i shaved my head so i you know we could kind of well you still have a little bit of hair you just can't see it because everybody white. in your office i see has got plenty of hair everybody's got a better a better the set only of hair than i two do two headed people here you just and you I. and i man just you and i so Thank you guys very much for tuning into this week's episode of the Campaign Grind. Um, as always, if this is your first time tuning in, please, you know, I guarantee you guys are going to find some useful information. Just please feel free to share this with your friends, your family. Um, this podcast, this episode, this vlog, whatever you guys want to call it, is um, a campaign related vlog, uh, episode, podcast. But I guarantee you, you're going to find some useful gold nuggets there that you're going to be able to implement into your everyday life, your personal life, your business life. Like I tell all of our clients, at the end of the day, every campaign is run as a business. Instead of selling a product, you're selling a person and their vision. So you're going to find a lot of useful information here that you're going to be able to utilize in your everyday life and your business. If you're an avid listener of the campaign grind, I appreciate the love. I appreciate the support. Thank you guys very much. Just click subscribe, share it with your friends, comments, uh, all that fun stuff. So we got a pretty neat episode lined up for you guys today. We're going to be talking about the three digital tools campaigns should jump on. Three digital tools that campaigns should definitely implement ASAP into their campaign. Um, but before we get into those three digital tools, um, I really want to talk up to you guys about the difference between traditional media and new media. Now, when you're running for office, a lot of people think TV, radio, newspapers, and so on and so forth. But times are changing, campaigns need to change too. So your strategy needs to change. Um, don't get me wrong, yes, TV, radio, and newspaper, they still have their viewership. They still have people that buy that hard copy of that newspaper and whatnot. But the reality is, it's dying. That's my opinion. You talk to Ray, he thinks that shit is thriving. But <laughs> I'm just saying. So. Um, when it comes to your campaign, you got to figure out the demographics of the of the voter audience that you're going to be going after, the, the universe that you're going to be going after. If it's an older uh, generation, an older demographic, yes, you may want to uh, add some money, so, some some money into TV, radio, and traditional media. Um, if it's a younger crowd, even if you're running, you know, in, in a somewhat mixed community. I would venture to say go more with new new media, new digital advertising rather than the traditional. The reason why you're going to be able to target more, you're going to be able to pound the hell out of these people and it's not going to be as expensive. So this is kind of where him and I disagree. He thinks traditional media, you know, still has their 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 stronghold. They still have, they're still thriving. Uh, my personal opinion is that it is dying. One of the reasons why because you have digital tools such as Facebook, social I mean uh, uh, social media such as Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, where people really get their news, they get all their information there. Um, very rarely do people in our generation, I don't know about your generation, but our generation, I don't think that they check out uh, newspaper websites or pick up the hard copy and stuff like that. Very few of them do. What do you got to say about that? Uh, well, you know, uh, first it's uh, going back to one of your podcasts with regards to fundraising. You know, and your pocket. And of course, you know, saturation is a very important issue, I think, on any campaign, you know, uh, specifically directed at the, at, the, uh, at the area or the district or the, you know, that you're running for. Yeah. But uh, I, I, I'm a strong believer that, that, you know, radio's got a niche. And you gotta, you, gotta, you, gotta, you gotta put your money, you know, into the right places. And you gotta, you know, that's, that's the reason I always keep pounding on the fact that you need a strategist. And you need a plan before you take off, because you want to put your money, you know, in the right places, and that's you know, you, even if you have you know thousands of dollars and so on, you know, uh, campaigns are very costly today, for the same reason that you're saying. Yeah. We're using a lot of different tools that you know weren't used in the past. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, it's very important that uh, that you know you have sufficient funds and direct it to the uh, right media. Uh, I, I, I've been surprised because, uh, you know, different things that have happened in some of the, my, my own campaign, your campaign, and other, other campaigns that I've been exposed to, 
<coughs> and uh, I didn't expect it to be so. But well, as we you know go into your program today, yeah, you know we can touch up on some of the things. Yeah, like one of the reasons that that we're talking about this on this episode is because um, I was telling telling our team here earlier today this morning when when I woke up I checked Facebook and I saw that the local newspaper here in Miami Dade County um, was advertising on Facebook. Um, so they had a, a sponsored ad on Facebook promoting uh, an article, promoting an event that they're having. But before Facebook, people would go to this particular newspaper or, or this particular business and advertise because they wanted to get more eyeballs, more visibility. But now, in my opinion, with, with the way that the digital age has kind of evolved, it's the tables have turned. Mm -hmm. So now you have these traditional media companies such as the local newspaper that we have here in Miami-Dade County advertising in on Facebook, on social media where there's more audience, where there's more more eyeballs and basically they could target a lot more. Yeah. So that's the reason we're talking about this today because the tables have turned. Yeah. You have the traditional media people, radio, TV, uh, newspapers, basically advertising on social media platforms trying to engage new Mm -hmm. new uh, new viewers or get more viewership or, or whatever the case may be more clicks whatever their goal may be at the end of the day so tables have turned times they, have changed they certainly have you know uh, when I first came to Miami about 25 years ago yeah, right. one of the things that I did was I uh, founded a, uh, a company in Miami which was called uh, South Florida Publishing, and we did. Uh, we published a uh, Miami Beach uh, news was a paper, and actually we were the first ones to advertise things like uh, when Jose Garcia Pedrosa ran for uh, city manager, or was like city manager, and a lot of you know Mr. Navarro was chief of police at those times, yeah. and we were the ones, the first ones to come up with a when we had the uh, the trail. The I mean the. Uh, the uh, tranvia or whatever they call it mm -hmm. now, the uh, you know, the local bus in Miami Beach and so on, and that was you know tremendous innovation. But in the past, uh, newspapers also combined with uh, radio stations, mm -hmm. and uh, the yeah. same as you know, media, all media companies anyway, they all advertising Absolutely. media companies, and they just you know they go with the uh, innovations with the things that are going in. In the past, a lot of uh, uh, radio stations advertised or mentioned in their programming uh, different local papers and so on and so forth. Absolutely. And the local papers yeah. used to have in their section, uh, used to advertise uh, radio station programming. And well, all that. and, and so that's like what's happening now. It's the same thing happening with the uh, with with social, social media. Social media. Yeah. Yeah. So instead of you going to the newspaper, put out an ad for a garage sale, people are just jumping onto Facebook and saying, I'm gonna have a garage sale at this day, at this location, yes. at this time. So I'm telling you, times are changing. You need to, yes. especially for your campaign and, and or your business, you need to utilize the power of, of social media and yeah. the internet. Um, so I know we kind of geared on a little bit off topic there, but traditional media, radio, newspaper, TV, you know, it kind of has somewhat relevance. Mm -hmm. I don't really think so. New media, digital advertising, Facebook, social media, I think that is now that is the future I don't think that's going anywhere mm -hmm. um, basically the reason why is you can micro target everybody you want to hit whether it's uh, you're selling LaCroix water or you're, if you're running for office you want to target the, the voters in your district so um, I think that digital is, is today I don't think digital is going anywhere it, it allows you to really micro target who you want to hit you save about 37 to 43 uh, cents per impression um, if you micro target correctly um, but one traditional media that has not gone anywhere, and I don't think it's going to go anywhere, and I think it, it's, it's alive, it's thriving, and, and, and people love the shit out of it, especially campaigns. You know what it is? Tell me. Direct mail. You're the, the strategist. Direct mail. So direct mail is thriving. The reason why is because it's personal. You're sending personalized uh, pieces, personalized letters, personalized mailers to these particular voters. Um, and campaigns, just as if you're selling a product, is establishing a relationship with your buyer. 
and you got to do the same exact thing with your campaign so sending direct mail direct letters to these voters customized uh, letters and mailers to these voters is going to go a long way why because it's that one-on-one -on -one connection that makes a huge difference touching up on that the fact is that you know it better be very professional and you also want that again you know uh, you have to strategize everything before you take off and make sure that uh, you know your campaign is branded and make sure that you know that is very professional when you're going on social media or yeah. or the radio or any or direct mail and so on and this is something that uh, you know your uh, here we go here's a your plug your strategist a plug. and, here's and a plug. I'm not gonna mention you Pedro. okay so no no not mention of this campaign because you know then it's, it's kind of redundant but uh, you know it's very important that, that, that you do have that plan that you have that organization that professional everything you know is is uh, making uh, the voters aware yeah you know of your platform and and they continuously getting your information because they get you know they get a whole bunch of stuff in the mail oh they get gosh. bills they get the flyer they get a whole bunch of things yeah and all your you know uh, or I think a flyer is only here locally I'm, I'm not sure no <laughs> but um but yeah I understand what you're saying direct mail listen that is one of the the, yeah. the traditional media uh, uh, tools that we still utilize here for all of the campaigns that we get involved in but moving right into the the actual topic of this episode uh, the three digital tools campaigns should jump on should definitely implement into their campaign are basically email blast is number one email blasting is very inexpensive um, it's very easy to just pull up the voter files from from your 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 elections department request that you get some email addresses for those particular voters um, once you get the voter file you're gonna want to make sure that you target you filter that data you filter the information so you're only hitting up the people that you are expecting to come out to vote in your election as I say in a lot of these episodes whenever we talk about these things is there are people that only vote in November elections or in general elections but don't necessarily vote in primary elections in August so you want to make sure that you're targeting the right people and if you're running in a municipality race and your elections in March April May June you're gonna to have to really micro target there to make sure that you're hitting the people that are gonna come out to vote in that municipal election so email blasting is the number one tool that I believe every single campaign should uh, start utilizing if you're not but continue utilizing if you're still if you have been using it but use it to its full potential you want to make sure that you have automation set up on your email blasts should people respond saying I'm interested I want to donate I want to volunteer and stuff like that have a whole uh, sequence set up with your email program you no know, they there's a whole bunch of them out there the one that we personally use is MailChimp it allows you to set up those automation uh, responses so set up that whole email blast you guys definitely it's not just putting together an email once a week or once a month Sending it out to your 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 base, your donors, or volunteers. You need a professional handling all of that for you. Correct. Yeah. Because it's it's very much it's very systematic that it be systematic, that it be timely, yeah, and that it be professional, and you know, and that's the that's the uh, you know the dressing <laughs> that you want to show. You don't want to show up with a nice suit and dirty shoes. Absolutely. So it's very important that you have everything branded and everything's together, professional and uh you know timely is so important you know i agree it's, all, it's all about the timing you. it's all about the timing believe it or not it's all about the timing whenever we get involved with campaigns one of the first things we do is create a timeline and a budget for the candidate so they know exactly what's going to happen when it's going to happen and how it's going to happen moving on to the second thing social media advertising i know i'm beating a dead horse here with the social media but i'm very big on this social media you can micro target everybody you want to hit different messages one thing we like to do once we get the, the voter file from the elections department is break it up into three sections early voting election day and absentee voters and then we create different campaigns for early voting voters election day voters and absentee ballot voters not one voter is going to get the same exact message uh as as somebody else in in early voting or election day or absentee so it's different types of campaigns different themes different messaging um you got to be consistent with that it, campaigns used to be very cookie cutter used to be one size fit all you know we send this message out we use these colors and yeah. stuff like that once again times have changed campaigns need to change too and they are especially now with social media so it's not a one size fit all message right now with social media you can actually just target hispanics in your area 
put a Spanish uh, ad out there. You could uh, do a uh, target out or carve out the Jews uh, in your area, send a Jewish message out there, so on and so forth. So make sure you try to micro-target as much as possible. And I know I keep on saying micro-target because that is the key to any successful campaign, micro-targeting the voters. You don't want to miss anybody. No, absolutely not. You know, I've seen a lot of campaigns that have, that have lost uh, the campaign uh, because uh, they have missed, uh, you know, touching up on uh, different areas that uh, could have been, yeah. you, you know. There, there's a lot of candidates that what they do is they try to blanket the entire district or the entire city or state or whatever. Um, but the reality is it's not going to work. Going back to what I said probably a couple of minutes ago, that there are voters that only vote in November elections but don't vote in August elections. So if you blanket the entire city, county, district, whatever you're running for, you're going to be hitting and spending money on somebody mm -hmm. that's not necessarily going to come out to vote in that district. So once again, micro target, know your audience, know who you're hitting up and be very persistent. One thing, I'm very, and this is still part of social media advertising. One thing I like a lot and I think is, 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 uh, is going to be changing everything is, uh, is voice and video. So video is very big. A lot of people are so used to just creating these pictures, you know, putting little text on it saying vote today, vote tomorrow, vote for me, this and that, whatever. Video is huge. People don't like seeing static images anymore and, mm -hmm. and, and commenting on that stuff. They want to know more about the candidate. They want to know more about you, your family, what you're going to do. So take advantage of video. Everybody's got, you know, one of these things. They got mm -hmm. smartphones. You know, if you don't got a smartphone, you got a dumb phone. So video got, is like face to face. That's what it is. So you yeah, create a, a face to face and, and, and you do a, a video introduction about yourself, uh, uh, what you're going to do and so on and so forth and put it out there on social media. It doesn't have to be a fancy camera. Just use, use your smartphone, use your, your mobile device, Apple, Android, uh, Blackberry. All, most phones now have uh, video capabilities or, or photo capabilities, but Use your phone, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. Just put your information out there. Be accessible to the voters. That's what the voters want. And voice, one thing that we started doing now, and I, I don't know if I told you, is we actually have the campaign grind uh, on Alexa. It's an Alexa skill. So if you guys here watching um, have Alexa at home, an Amazon Alexa, mm -hmm. or an Echo Dot or Echo, whatever, you know, download the campaign grind skill. It's actually, um, uh, you get about, I think it's about a minute or so of useful information for campaigns, motivation, and daily tips and tricks and strategies that we still use today to dominate your election. So if you got Alexa, you got Amazon, Echo, Dot, uh, any Amazon device, honestly, you know, download the, the campaign grind skill on your Alexa. Check it out, you're not gonna wanna miss it. Um, but the third and final tool that all campaigns should utilize is text messaging. A lot of people say that one-on-one -on -one call you know, and I, 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 we still do phone banking for our candidates because you still got to establish that rapport with these particular voters. But what I've come to realize is that a lot of voters have transitioned from their home phone to their cell phone. So then if they don't see, if they see that it's a number they don't recognize on their phone's caller ID, they don't answer. We still leave voicemails, but we spend a lot of time leaving those voicemails. Yes, we have a little button that says drop voicemail here, drop voicemail there, but we do waste time calling voters that aren't gonna pick up because they don't recognize those numbers. Now, way back when, prior to cell phones, when we would do the phone banking, um, cell phones didn't have caller ID. Caller ID was something that just came out and, and not everybody had it. So it was easier, you still, you would get more responses because people didn't know who it was. They thought it was a family member. But with the new, new technology, new phones and so on and so forth and caller ID, what we've come to realize that's been most effective is text messaging. People, you send out a text message from your campaign. Hey Pedro, I'm gonna be in your area this weekend. I wanna talk to you, I wanna knock on you, your door, let you know what my vision is for our city, our district, our state. Uh, what time is a good time for you for me to swing by? then I get that text message and I can respond at my convenience. So it's not that somebody's calling my house while I'm bathing my daughters or I'm cooking dinner, or I'm cleaning this or I'm doing God knows what. I could actually respond when it's convenient for me. Well, even if you didn't respond, you already uh, become aware uh, of the candidate if he leaves the right message. Correct. Hey Pedro, you know, this is so and so, I'm running, uh, you know, for That's council if you, if you member. Call? In your district, if you yeah. call, yeah. But yeah. now the and thing is that aware. the thing that we come across as well once we're calling, 
No, well, listen, we still call and we're not going to stop calling. But one, what I'm trying to get at is it's, it's, we are wasting some time leaving voicemails, okay? But then that's fine. You leave the voicemail, right? And they're going to hear that voicemail. But then you get some phones that the voicemail box is full and you can't leave anything. So you just wasted 15, 20 seconds on the phone waiting for somebody to answer in hopes of leaving a voicemail and the mailbox is full. So when it comes to things like that, don't, I'm not saying to abandon phone banking, you yeah. need to phone bank. Yeah. I think that is very crucial. But implement text messaging strategy or, 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 or campaign into your campaign. It's very, very effective. It's very personable. It's very one-on-one. -on -one. The, the, the voter, the person you're sending it to is going to be able to respond at their earliest convenience. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, believe it or not, it's all about convenience now. I was telling them today, um, this morning, uh, here at the office is that I, I, I know that we needed water. I wasn't going to have time to go to, to, the, to the store and pick up some water and bring it here to the office because I was watching the girls during spring break and I just wanted to come here. So what I did is I got my phone, opened up Amazon Prime or Amazon Now, and within two hours they delivered water here. So it's all about convenience nowadays. Everybody's so used to getting things now, you know, getting the information now with Google. You need to know what the square root of whatever is, you Google it. You need to find out what, what the capital of whatever state <coughs> is, you Google it. You know, everybody's so used to having that information at their fingertips that your campaign needs to kind of evolve around that mentality as well. Mm -hmm. It's not about this is when the phone calls are being made. If they didn't answer, we leave the voicemail. No, it's all about the convenience for the voters. If you, once you realize that and you determine and figure out a good strategy, that's convenient for one, your campaign, but two, for the people you're trying to appeal to, your voters, I guarantee that's a recipe for success. I have to agree with you. Sorry uh, of the, you know, age difference and so on, but I have to agree with you. I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't expecting that yeah. at all. But um, you have anything you else to add? Well, you know what I was gonna say, uh, what you're saying is so important. Um, so important uh, you know I was very surprised I've used you know Facebook and Twitter and so on uh, on my campaign and uh, but I wasn't aware of some different things that can be done with you know this social media uh, the whole bunch of things different you know the different social media uh, that you can use and uh, and I wasn't aware of the fact that uh, you know so many even early voters or voters in in, in a uh, in a special district for example uh, I, I, I was very surprised when I went to see that you know out of uh, 30,000 voters in a district 25,000 were using Facebook Yep. Even though, you know, people in my no, age bracket, no matter the age group. No, no, no. I was very really <coughs> surprised to the fact well, to how many early people who are 90% voters, 85% voters who vote in all the elections. And they're older. They're president, and they're older. And they're, they, older. And they are, they are really uh, hooked into the social media things. Absolutely. A lot of them are not very mobile. A lot of them don't like to come out of their homes very often and so on yeah and as a consequence you know and the the fact of uh, you know it's become uh, so prol proliferated and everybody has a computer or a smartphone or a smartphone or a tablet or whatever you want to call it you know and so I was just shocked to the fact that you know be that such a small difference and, uh, and these, you know, elderly groups, the, the younger people, you know, the younger generation. They were born with they're it. They're born with it, yeah. you know. They're born with it. They, that's, that's, that's their media. Yeah, well, what know. I've come to realize, Ray, is that, especially with the older, the older folks, is that when we first started out doing campaigns, you know, social media was something new, you know, and it was only young people, the millennials, yeah. what we are now, whatever. But what I've come to realize is as, as time goes on and, and social media keeps on evolving, technology is evolving, and, and the older generation is getting more involved in, 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 in the social so media. Much, yeah. Um, yeah. What I've come to realize is that, especially the older folks, is that they use social media to get or stay in touch with their, their, their family. 
Yeah. Because a lot of them, you know, may live in other states, in other cities, exactly. or, or in another municipality within the same county, but they're older, they can't trans they can't drive there, can't take the bus, whatever the case is. So they use platforms such as Facebook yeah. to stay in touch with their grandchildren. See their pictures and uh, uh, video uh, yeah. with their great grandkids or grandkids yeah. and their children and so on in yeah. other states. Yeah. Very, very you know, it's so, incredible. So it, it's it's you know if you if you think if you're running for office and, and, and you think that social media is not for you or for your campaign, you know, don't even bother running. Because even older folks are, are are involved in social media, yeah. um, and it's not well, going. Well, look anywhere. at uh, President Trump right now. Yeah. He's on Twitter uh, every know, day, tw basically 24 hours a day. Yeah. You know, Obama really did a tremendous uh, move on that. Yeah. You know, he really uh, was very aggressive with social media. Yeah. And now Trump, you know, really expanded it. Very you know, aggressive. So, yeah. that, that's where I was going to get it. Actually, thanks for bringing that up. Is that Remember, I was saying that people want information now. They're so used to having yes. everything now at their fingertips. And that's what social media allows you to do. Something like Twitter, Facebook. You have voters in your constituency that wants to know your, your stance on gun control, on traffic, on green, and this yeah, and that. I, I they like can just saying, ask you. You're, you're on your telephone. Yeah. You can now, you can, uh, you know, you can uh, hook up with CNN or yeah. with C-SPAN 1 or 2 or you know, the Congress in session or Absolutely. anything, you know, the, uh, the, your, the county uh, channel where you live. Yeah. Uh, all these things are, you know, in social media. So you actually can be anywhere. Absolutely. At your job, at, at, while you're driving home and so on and so forth. So it's uh, like you, you can be hooked in uh, 24 hours a day. I agree. I agree. So guys, social media is not going anywhere. You got to make sure they do implement somewhat of a, of a social media strategy for your campaign email blasting, social media advertising, and most importantly, text messaging. I'm not saying that phone banking is dead, that making those calls is dead, that is not dead. That is something that we still use today to dominate elections that, we re that we're involved in. And direct mail. And direct mail is, is, is one of those big things as well. But those three digital tools that campaigns must implement, emails, social media advertising, and most importantly, text messaging. What you want to do ultimately is create that one-on-one -on -one relationship with that voter. Make it convenient for them. Make sure that you're accessible, and that's what social media is here for. Make you real life, make you accessible. If they got any questions, they could call you, they could email you, they could tweet you, Facebook you, Instagram you, so or Snap. So, guys, you have anything else to add, Mr. Ray Valdez? It's a big job, but if you're committed to running for office, you have to, you know, really study all these things and be alert. And let me tell you, uh, this podcast, uh, you know, uh, relate to a lot of different issues, and and each, each podcast covers a different area. Yeah. And you know, but it all comes together, you know, as a as a campaign subject. Wow. So the fact is, if you haven't seen some of the earlier podcasts, you should go and and take a look in there, and I'm sure it's going to be very helpful. Yeah. It's going to be very important or give Pedro a call. Yeah, you give us a call 305-860-1010, 305-860-1010. As Ray was saying, we've done, I don't even know how many episodes of, of, of the campaign grind. We have it on SoundCloud, we have it here on YouTube. Um, but yes, you could actually go back and see all these other episodes. You can kind of piecemeal your campaign, get an idea of exactly what it really takes to not only win a, a, a campaign, but dominate an election. So. Make sure you check out all those videos if you guys are running for office or you're running for re-election. Check out those videos. You're going to find a lot of useful information. Like I said, uh, thank you guys very much for tuning into this week's episode of The Campaign Grind. I am Pedro Diaz, signing out.